I'm Susie Botello, host of the SBP podcast, Mobile Filmmaking, and you're listening to episode 144. Hey, we've got the winner. <laughs> this is how we're going to start. Levi Austin Morris, the winner Woo! of the best feature film in the universe at yeah, right. the International <laughs> Mobile Film Festival. <laughs> yeah. How are you? Woo. I'm doing very well. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. I am stoked. I mean, you know, it's been a journey for both of us. Like our relationship together is like my short films and then uh, and now having the feature. And yeah, it's just it's been a cool sort of arc and trajectory, I think, with the International Mobile Film Festival. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, you know, just so that the people know. I have yes. no influence whatsoever. Now, I'm not saying, oh, that sucks that Levi won. <laughs> I'm <am> not saying <laughs> I that. I hope not. <laughs> no, not at all. But yeah. it was like I had no influence whatso- whatsoever. And the judges, right? The yeah. judges, I literally informed them and they know. <laughs> like the ones that were repeat judges, they know. They're not allowed to talk to each other. They're not allowed sure. to share, even with their wives or husbands or dogs, really. Um, yeah. They're not allowed to discuss it in any shape or form. They're not allowed to get influenced. Okay. You know, it's. I love that. I love that. I, you know, it's been something back when I started the film festival that I researched, and it's always been like that. It's like, Good. nope, you are not allowed to talk. And because. Yeah. No biases. Yeah, because otherwise it would be here's here's a group of people, you know what I mean. And I don't sit down with them. I don't discuss it. And some of them have said, "Okay, now that we're done, can I discuss?" Can we talk yes. about it? And I'm like, "Wait, wait, <laughs> yeah. wait for the rest, so that I'm not influenced." Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's definitely, and they don't know themselves, by the way. Sure, they don't. Yeah, because because they've only you they've know done their own thing, right? They've rated each film themselves, so they don't know what what who's going to win or not i mean yeah. they can guess they yeah. can go i'm sure everybody's going to pick this one you know and then they're wrong sure. no i'm just kidding but and then they're wrong <laughs> <laughs> but um but yeah i was really um how would they say keenly surprised okay um Excellent. yeah i was i thought i mean because it was such a close call in in my taste there's some really good virtues to your film and there's some really good virtues to the other film, uh, by the other filmmaker, the other competition. But I'm just, I'm like, well, cause I already know Levi and we've, I know all the work that you've put into this. Sure. You had yeah. multiple locations, mm-hmm. all the special effects. You were very intricate, um, very dedicated to every tiny little aspect of it. The, yeah. the work that you did with the props, all the art, you also acted in it. So let's talk. It was a lot. Yeah, you let's are talk right. about that. What what all did you put in to this film? Um, I mean, I, I did all the storyboarding. I did the shot list. Um, I made uh, a lot of the props with my producer, Jamie, uh, who you now have met and adore because she's incredible. Yes. Um, yeah. So like, and then, and then, uh, acting, I, obviously I wrote the script and like, I, there were things that I wasn't pleased with in the script while we were shooting. So I was rewriting while we were shooting. Um, that's so typical. Yeah, I mean, if you yeah. care, right. I, it's, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot. Um, and then, uh, I mean, even the, the massive painting that hangs over her bed at the end of the film, yeah. Um, I, in an earlier draft of the film, there was a scene where she comes into the room and finds me painting it and it wasn't done. And so during shooting and it wasn't supposed to be done at that point. Um, and it's not revealed until the end what the painting looks like. Uh, but I ended up cutting that scene or, and then it's, it's in a flashback, um, that shows up in the film, but I was painting that painting throughout filming as well. So we would finish shooting (laughs) and then I'd go home and I'd paint for a few hours and then I'd come back the next day. Um, And it's just because it needed to have that sort of progression in the film where it wasn't done and then it was almost done at the very end. So, um, so there was a lot, there was a lot that like that went into this. Cause like, you know, 
you know, it's a lot of work just being on set. But the production part is exhausting for the yeah, most part. But it's so fun. Like, well, I yeah. love being on set. But, you know, yeah. it's like yeah. you get this real big high energy thing during production. And then when you're yeah. when you're going home type thing, you're I, I mean, I've been on sets yeah. where it's like, OK, now I'm alone. I'm driving back and it's like whew, coming yeah. down. You know what I mean? And you just yeah. want to chill, relax and re and I did not for the have next that. day. Yeah. And I did not have no, that. So, that's why yeah. I'm like, wow. I mean, lessons were learned and I'm super proud of the film. I'm like, uh, and I think, I think, um, well, it's despite, over, right? Like the pain part yeah. is over. Like you, you, yeah. I'm, I'm not trying to say you suffered through it, but there were times when I it was like, my art. <laughs> yes, but there was times yeah. when you could have said, I mean, I do this a lot where I'm going, just get through it. Like you, you commit yourself. Right. And then you yeah. go, damn, I'm not in the mood for this right now, actually. You know, because sure. you can't predict your mood and other things yeah. that happen, you know, and and there you are. And see, that takes that that's passion right there. When Oh, yeah. Like this was 100 percent fueled by my passion and and the passion of those around me who saw, you know, saw my passions. And, you know, um, so it was it was absolutely a group effort, but it was also like. I would say the driving force was my my own passion for the project. So, yeah, to see it through. Yeah, to see it through. Yeah. So uh, let's talk a little bit just to just to get this out of the way. <laughs> sure. How was the film festival experience this year for you? Oh, it was so fun. It was so <laughs> fun. Uh, we ended up leaving. I don't. I might have messaged you this. I don't remember. But when we were leaving, uh, both Jamie and Allison were like, that felt like camp. Like it felt like we came together for the weekend as filmmakers and we just had camp. And it was like, it was like we met the other campers and you know, like it was just so fun and it was so intimate and it was so like, like we really got to connect with every other artist that was there. Um, and I will say like having gone to other film festivals that was very unique to this festival. Um, really getting to bond with the other filmmakers. Um, that was, yeah, that was so that something was, that other, you know, like when you hear it from different people that don't know who said what, Yeah, you know what I mean? On my end, um, that was very, very, it was, it, you know, there were people there, even people who just bought a ticket, but they happened to be in the industry. Yeah, uh, they weren't part of the. Yeah, there was that gentleman at the very end uh, on the at the second day who he had no connection to the festival. He just bought a ticket. Yep. I was like, that's so cool. Yeah. yeah, he came up to me and said the same thing. You know, he was like, I'm from so and so. I moved, I moved to I think he said here or L A in L A, and um, you know, he just his name was Ben. I yes. think. yes, yeah, Ben or Ken. I can't remember. I think it was. I ben. think it, I think you're right. Yeah, I, I'm doing thinking now. I think, I think, I think, I think, uh, but he was telling me, you know, I've been to so many film festivals and I mean, he named a lot of film. He didn't name each one, but he gave me a sure. number that was pretty high up there. I was like, yeah. wow, did you like break a record? Uh, <laughs> and he said, I've just never experienced the intimacy that I experienced here and the, you know, the energy with between yeah. the connection with everybody. Yeah. And so that 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 is And I think that was universally felt like by everybody. I'm yeah. I mean I still Chelsea and I have been texting <laughs> and 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 messaging on Instagram and Ricky I have plans to go see his girlfriend in a musical with him Aww. um up here in LA. So like yeah, like it it's genuinely like made connections that I'm excited about. So I yeah. feel like the you know in, um from my end um, you know, because I'm, I'm also the director, right? Yeah. Uh, and so there was so much happening that I had to coordinate with people and we had, yeah. we had people helping out that had never been there before. It was their first time. So I really needed, and they really needed, you know, some guidance from me. Yeah. And, um, and I don't mind doing things myself. I've done so much myself, uh, and it's different when you're assigning someone else, the things that you do, you know, yeah. it, it, at the same time. 
But, you know, I, I feel like had it not been for Friday, the kickoff, I probably wouldn't have had a chance to really hang out with you guys. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I feel like that was really the first, like, I mean, when we all first came together, like that was the most, I think that you and I were able to sort of chat and, um, and then afterwards it felt like, you know, you were, you were doing a lot of coordinating and stuff. Um, uh, but it, it was really nice. Like that kickoff was really fun and exciting. Like to, you know, I remember walking in and, um, meeting era Philly uh, and, you know, like, uh, that was literally, I, you know, a lot of people, a lot of founders go, I can't wait to introduce you to everybody. But I literally did. You literally introduced yes. us to everybody, including <laughs> a dog named Walter. I know. <laughs> like, like, yeah. So like it was, it was a good time. It was super fun. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I really enjoyed it this time more than ever. And I always do. You were there last year too. And you know, I, was, yes. I just love the heck out of my own film festival. Yeah. Uh, because you should, it's, 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 it's unique and it's fun. Yeah. And it's like, it's, um, it's like, people who despite the odds are like, I'm going to make a film and it's going to be good. You know, I just um, cherish, I've always, I wouldn't do it if, I mean, my love for filmmakers over the years has got, I, I opened up more and more to just flaunt it. <laughs> sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. Say, I love you guys. And I just, and, and I think it's when, you know, social media is social media, right? Like yeah, everybody's yeah. like, oh, I, you know, but not everybody, but you know what I mean? It's easier yeah. to just do that and then turn it off and you're done, right? Yeah. But in person, I've, you know, I'm always, I think it's more evident in person. Yeah. You know, how I feel about people. And I think you see it in the way that I'm, I hope anyways, that I'm taking care of uh, everybody during the film, the film festival. I mean, I can't yeah. give everybody caviar and roses. No, not yet. I don't think anybody <laughs> wants that. Like, yeah, like, no, I mean, I hope, I hope that you felt that love right back because totally for all did. of us, it was, it was like, it was just a very fun, exciting atmosphere to be in. And like to, to, you know, like to be there with Chelsea and ET and, and their group, you know, that was, I think, I think they had said it was their first, uh, public screening. Yeah. Um, it was their sort first of, film festival experience. I think I love that. Yeah. Like, and, and, and like to, for all of us to get to experience that with them, but also then the support that we all gave each other, like it was very exciting, you know, like every film, the hooting and hollering because, because we, we intimately knew everybody, you know, like we, we had a chance to, to eat lunch together and, and, you know, chat for an hour and then go back to go back to the festival. So it was like, we really got to know each other. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the support for each other was awesome. Was yeah. It was so fun. Well, and then of course, Sunday was wild. Yes. It was yes, wild. It was. it was crazy. It was been, and guys, I mean this in a good way. I'm not trying to scare our listeners. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um it was it was really fun. Sunday's usually you know, Saturday everybody wants to come and see their film together and yeah. and this year I think I stuck to that plan just mainly on Saturday. And then we opened up with the rookies, you know, on yep. Sunday, which was great. And I will say like I I I commented today on um I don't remember the person's name, the one who did the robot, the one that won yes, with Kelly. the robot, Kelly. Um, I commented on her post because like all of the rookie films were so good. Yeah. Like they were just, they were so fun. Like Ricky's music video and Chelsea and ETs and, and then the robot, like they were all just so interesting. Um, so yeah, it was just really fun to see these non rookies be rookies, you know, yeah. cause they were too good to be rookies. Like, yeah, yeah. It well, cool. it's their first, you know, it's, yeah. it, it's their first step in. And a lot of people I've noticed, um, I think, I think what it does, especially if they come to the festival, because then they really get to see the, the other films and they get to see the, the short film competition as well and meet everybody and feel more comfortable. But what it really does is it builds up their confidence. Cause I think, some people uh, from from my end, right? This is the second year we've had the rookies, right? 
Okay. And the behind the scenes chatter with me and the filmmakers who want to submit films and they submit them to the rookies category is like, well, I, I'm not sure I feel comfortable. Like my film is that good enough to be in the regular sure. competition because our regular sure. short film competition has gone up. Like we expect way more now after our yeah. 11th, 10th, 12th year, we expect more from people who are submitting short films. We're like, we're yeah. done with the whole thing of, well, because you shot it on a phone and you've never shot a film before, we're like, no, no, we want you to sh share some really awesome films yeah. now. And we expect and, I that. Mean, yeah, even uh, I was talking about it with Hector because uh, Hector was basically the jack of all trades on our set. Yeah. And he was there on Saturday and we were talking about how stunning some of the cinematography like like in I don't remember what, what it was called, but the black and white one. That opening shot with the fog and the field and the bike was so oh, just Juju. stunning. Yes, it was stunning. Juju with the shoes and the, yeah. yeah. Um, it was like, there were some just gorgeous shots. And like the uh, the time one. Yes, that the I, one, Elizabeth the, Marlowe. Oh my oh God, my I'm Lord. pulling up the names out of like, I'm, yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're famous. Um, but yeah, the, the cinematography was so beautiful yeah. um, on the beach with the sunset. Like, yeah. It reminded um, me of your first film, the one that you submitted yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, actually, 90 Seconds to Live, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so it was just, it was so exciting to see that. And like, because I remember my first film and I was, I mean, granted, this was not the the rookie category. Right. Um, but watching the short films, I was just like, gosh, like the growth of, not only uh, people and 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 like their artistry, but like even just the phones, because my first films were shot on an iPhone four, and I almost posted it. I almost reposted it the other day, and just to to say like, my God, I've come a long way. Yes, um, and and see for me, I've seen it, and I and and not only yeah. with you, but with other filmmakers as well. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, Elizabeth has this is I think this is the second time that she was in our film festival. OK, okay. Um, I think it was in 2020 that she was in our film festival. If I'm if my memory usually my memory does really good, but I'm totally just remembering this right now. Uh, sure. Ananke Films, uh, film productions or something like that, what her company is. Um, okay. But the growth of so there's three types of growth right there's yeah. the filmmaker who is continuing to experiment and make films right mm -hmm. the technology itself that is getting mm -hmm. better and better and better yep. and then the growth of mobile filmmaking on its own you know yeah. with all yeah. the resources that people have now compared to before i mean look yeah. conrad mess <laughs> going back to the beginning conrad yeah. mess uh his first film which was in 2011 right it was the I very totally first i totally watched that by the and way and remember um, he shot that with an iphone 4 yeah and that film holds up today yeah because he was meticulous with it yeah and yep. The other films that he shot, you know, 4S and and things like that, they still hold up today. So you don't have to have the latest technology. No, you don't. Yeah. I mean, the T was shot on an iPhone 6. Yeah. And it, yeah. oh, man, <laughs> I, I still love that film. So all those <laughs> all these films from the past. Right. And now you're kicking it up more and more and more uh, yeah. each year. Which is something that doesn't happen with traditional cameras, obviously, because sure. they just come up with one, you know, there uh, there's a limit to the brands of cameras that people use for cinema. Yeah. You know, they're yeah. not 20. I mean, yeah. You know, it's really just a handful, right, that people normally mm -hmm. uh, purchase. And they cost a lot of money. But you mm -hmm. can't go and say, well, this $20,000 camera, I'm going to buy an one, the, the upgrade each year. <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, not a chance. Now, with the phones. And, <laughs> not unless you're Steven Spielberg. Yeah, well, that's true. Uh, yeah. You know, that's an exception. <laughs> but, <laughs> but the other, well, when it comes to smartphone cameras, there are new smartphone cameras, uh, smartphones with cameras. Um, every, you know, throughout the year, it's not like once yeah. a year. It's like, I mean, you could yeah. go now to the Sony if you wanted to, 
You could yeah. go to Samsung. You could go to, I mean, any of those. There's there's some other ones that I can't remember their names that are not mainstream. Google Google Pixel. Well, um, yeah, there's um, OnePlus, like, but there's Xiaomi yeah. or something like that. There was one in our film festival that was shot with that. That was pretty good, too. Okay. Um, but there's different different brands of, and there's some because our film festival is international. Yeah. So there are cameras available, say in Asia, that are not um, yeah. popular here at all. I don't even know if you can get them here, but they're different, and they're still and I will really say, good. Building off what you're saying, um, with the the international aspect, like that's something that people on my team also commented on. Is like we've been to film festivals where they're like, oh yeah, this is an international film festival, and you'll see like one or two films from other countries, but this one genuinely like it was like you know there's there's another one that took place on the beach and i'm i don't know but i i I mean from the writing i thought maybe it was in greece um but there were just there were so many films from other countries that i was just like i love this i love that we're really like i mean the the documentary about the the kid going off to college um was a beautiful film as well you know um so yeah yeah yeah. that's the one family that's the one that yeah family place yeah. Um, yeah, they were, and, and you know these these films. You know, they all had good audio because yeah. I mean that's one of the main criteria is the good audio and a good story. You know those yeah. things. The really cool thing is, I mean, the really interesting thing I should say is, uh, Levi, this has been the first year we get more filmmakers from LA than ever before. Good. That. Like actually come down or mm-hmm. just who submitted? Just well for between submitted and mm-hmm. actually coming. Cool. Cool. Yeah. I hope that continues because it was so fun to meet people from LA and know that like I get to meet, you know, like Jason, for instance, who composed uh for Help Wanted. Um, like he's somebody that like I plan on keeping in touch with, oh, he you know, was so like awesome. Yeah, it's just it's really cool that I that like so many LA people were there. Yeah, and and I'm Monique and what I'm saying and, is and now you know mobile filmmakers from LA have a home in San Diego, which you yeah. know the best tacos again. It's <laughs> <laughs> you really love those tacos, the fish tacos. I'm really in yeah. love with fish tacos, but I'm fish anything. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the the whole. The whole experience was really, it, it was very unique this year um, from my perspective, because in previous years from year one, like the very first year we had this, this, this really young guy. I mean, he was like a teenager. He, he okay. wasn't like a teenager. He was a teenager. Sure. <laughs> um, sure. He came from Macedonia. Oh, wow. Like I literally had to look that up, you know, where he was yeah. from on Google. <laughs> I was like, where wow. is that? Um, and he came to San Diego. That was our very first film festival. And he came. That's to amazing. That. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. And I remember, uh, you know, we did a come. Uh, I did a thing in the welcoming for Mr. Sneed, my instructor who passed uh, yeah. this last year. And one of the things I, I said to him, I said, yeah, I already get enough, you know, people from San Diego or from L.A. or, you know, just locals. Right. And yeah. he said, Susie, that's a good thing, though. You know, uh, yeah. he said there are bunches of film festivals here. And, you know, even the San Diego Film Festival was more local between here and L.A. And he said, you know, there are many film festivals that wish they had international films. And I and I and I said to him and I said, you know, the thing is, when I first and I'm saying this to you, obviously, now, too. When I sure. first made the call for films, right? It was mm-hmm. the whole world, any human in the world, right? Yeah. And it was a, a international, right? From the start, because it was like, yeah. if you're anywhere in the world, you have access to a phone, share your yeah. story, make a movie. And I knew because I'd grown up in Spain, I lived in Italy and places like that, that yeah. international, uh, internationally, people look to here, you know, the United States as, you know, movie haven. Sure. You know, like, oh, it's all about movies here. Of course, 
although it seems like we're living in a movie, <laughs> yeah. uh, especially now. Um, yeah. But and we we see them, you know, in in from our perspective is different. But for them, it's like, oh, America, you know, the dream, the movies, you know, things like that, especially California. Right. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Hollywood. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And we're here. We're like literally next door. So yeah. the international part has always been a thing. And I've and at first it got to a point where I was just taking it for granted. Of course, we're going to get international films and things like that. But I think it's after COVID, you know. Yeah. I mean, I think people like being locked up in their house for a year and a half, you know, to two years, like, like absolutely. It sort of inspired people to like, what can I do? You know, how can I create still? Um, and I think a lot of people absolutely discovered mobile filmmaking at that time. Yeah. And I think that's yeah. what has opened up, but it's a, such a great way because I mean, if there's one thing, one positive thing that happened from that horrible time, is the fact that people said, well, you know what? I've got so much time in my hands. I'm just going to go ahead and try this yeah. thing out that people are yep. talking about and um, and did it and tried it. Yeah. And, I mean, Jennifer, Jennifer Zhang with Sharon. Yeah. She, yep. her movie, I mean, it just like skyrocketed. It went yeah. viral and all. I mean, that came from the pandemic, you know, yep. like, what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to make a movie with my iPhone. Of course, she went yeah. all out on that and it was pretty awesome. All right, let's go back to um, uh, your your wins because now you're ready for Netflix. <laughs> I appreciate it, Susie. <laughs> I appreciate your your support in that direction. I I mean, we still have a number of festivals we're waiting to hear back from. Yeah. Uh, we're we're gonna be in the festival circuit probably until the end of 2023. Um, but, uh, I definitely would love to get some sort of distribution deal if like Netflix, they're very specific about what cameras you can use. So I don't think they'll accept, unfortunately. I think, I think, <laughs> you know, at the same time that the, the, so a lot of things happen in parallel to each other. You know what I mean? Sure. And I think they've got competition with other streaming services now that they didn't realize they had a few years ago. Sure. And yeah. at the same time, the the films, your film literally was good enough to be on Netflix. I've 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 got Netflix and I watch I Netflix appreciate that. and I'm looking at them going, some of these films really do. They're not that good. Sure. You know, sure, sure. But your film could definitely be on Netflix and fit in there just fine. And at the same time. You could you could definitely be on Amazon Prime and on Tubi and all of those things. Yeah. And I think Netflix needs to step up a little bit. They do a lot of international films. Yeah. Uh, but just because they're on Netflix does not mean that they're good. You sure. know what I'm saying? I mean, there's sort of the oversaturation that's happening on a lot of streaming ser services yeah. right now where they're just sort of funding things that, you know, everything um, and then, uh, some things are good and some things are not. Um, and so, yeah, I absolutely see that on Netflix. I see things that I really enjoy. And then I see things that I'm like, God, that was a struggle to finish. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I definitely, I, I think it's just kind of the oversaturation. And then I think indie filmmakers specifically, if they're passionate indie filmmakers who are, you know, I don't know, telling meaningful stories to themselves, like stories that mean something to them, you can see that passion and you can see that in their work. And so I think that those tend to resonate more. Um, so, yeah, yeah, because I think the consumers, right, the people who watch the films are yeah. more open. They can feel that. Yeah, yeah, they're more open ever since I think it's because of the streaming that they're more open to independent films yeah. that I yeah, don't know yeah. who those actors are, but I'm going to go ahead yeah. and watch it because, man, that poster is really cool. <laughs> yeah, especially in the horror yeah. uh, genre is oh, there's yeah. like there, horror fans will watch anything. If it's bad, they're going to love it because it's bad. If it's <laughs> Campy good, films. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If it's good, they're going to love it for those reasons. Um, and so like uh, I, I'm excited to see 
the legs that we can get with paralysis um, with, you know, streaming, maybe Tubi, maybe Shutter, maybe, you know, whatever we can get. Um, and just don't yeah, sell I'm, yourself short, you know. Oh, no, I, 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 I very much like we we have some emails and stuff uh, already. And so we have a plan of attack. Um, and I'm hoping that we can use you know, negotiation between like, oh, well, this is the offer we're getting here. Can you counter that? You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Play yeah. it like Peter Jackson did with the Lord of the Rings. You know, oh. you, you know, the story. Uh, so I, I was telling Jed about this, actually. Um, it, by the way, everybody, Jed Brophy came to the film festival. Um, Which was very cool. <laughs> uh, my lead actress was beyond herself she is the biggest lord of the rings fan it was so she was yeah it was so fun to watch that yeah well so peter jackson i saw him in it the the only reason that i even wanted to watch the lord of the rings is because of the backstory that uh there was a late night interviewer guy i don't remember his name it's not like i watched it all the time it was some cable show and he was interviewing you know, Peter Jackson. And he he was telling him, uh, Peter was telling this, this guy about how he got the distribution for his film. And he was saying basically that they had, um, they weren't getting lucky at all, um, at all. Like they were failing big time. I guess he had come out here to do that, to get distribution, to get the film's, um, to cut a deal and it yeah. was just falling through. So what he did was he had scheduled um, meetings, right, with with these networks or studios or whatever it was. And he said, <laughs> basically, he pulled a fast one on the one that he sold it to because he pretended okay. that he had a deal already with the previous one. Oh yeah. Yeah. And then he went to them and they, they accepted it. Otherwise he says we would have completely failed because yeah. both of them would have turned us down. Smart. That's smart. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, absolutely. So I guess you got to hustle. Levi is what I'm trying I to mean, say. I feel like this industry, you're always kind of hustling. Yeah. So you, you got to yeah. know how to do that. And, and yeah. if not, it's always worth hiring somebody who knows, Yes. You know. Yeah. Uh, you're seeing in Spark campaign. Yeah. Okay. So you really were successful with that, but um, I think I think I just want you to spend maybe five minutes sharing with everybody sure. your strategy for that because I think I think it was not only very successful, but I saw people in the audience that came that were part of your campaign, the funders. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was really that was really exciting. And actually, you brought but candy yeah. for them. Did oh I did yes yeah. <laughs> I did I was like did I but yes I did <laughs> yeah um, yeah I mean the seed and spark campaign it was uh, it was you know that's how we funded our movie and we split it into two things I talked a little bit about this in the workshop that we we led as well because um, a lot of the other filmmakers had questions about it but we did the production uh, campaign first uh, to raise the funds for just production costs um, and uh, the big thing though like we like. And I will I, I'm going to give credit where credit is due because Seed and Spark has so many um, videos on YouTube, YouTube of how to make a successful campaign. And I am somebody like even when I write scripts, I, I deep dive into research um, to make sure that I'm you know doing the best script that I can do. And so when we were doing the campaign, I deep dove into those videos and I went on Indiegogo and Kickstarter and other Seed and Sparks. And I was I was. Um, looking at other campaigns and seeing ones that were successful and ones that weren't. And so it was like really about, um, understanding, I guess, how to market our film, how to like get people excited about our film, but also how to authentically like in my own voice, because I feel like I'm a little bit playful, but I'm also incredibly professional and driven. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I wanted to show that in the videos, you know? Um, so there's like a level of humor in our pitch videos, um, that I wanted to incorporate, not because our movie's funny, because it's not, um, but because <laughs> like, because it's just like, you know, this is, this is who's making the film. Please trust us. And um, still it's entertainment. And, and Horror still like, is I, entertainment. Yeah. As opposed to like, I've seen a lot of pitch videos where it's just like somebody like, hi, 
I'm the filmmaker. Let me tell you about the film we want to make. And it's just sort of them talking at you. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, we like we really worked hard on that, on trying to just be authentic and genuine in it um, so that like and transparent. So people knew where their money was going, because I think a lot of uh, campaigns uh, also, they don't really break down where all the funding is going. Um, and so people are like, do they really know where they're going to, you know, put this money toward? And and we were very specific, like, you know, down to the dollar, like, oh, five hundred and forty eight dollars is going to this, you know. Um, so I can tell like, you the people that were there, they were like your family. I mean, I, I, I definitely feel very close with, um, actually everybody who, who was there, uh, I do feel close yeah. with, um, and they, they were the people who contributed, but the, like, there are other people that like, and that's, that's kind of what I talked about a little bit in the workshop as well is the people who are going to be funding your movie. Like, yeah, you might get some stragglers, some strangers, some out of your networks. Um, and we definitely got those. Uh, but for the most part, these are going to be people who are connected to somebody on the project. And so there are some people that I don't know, um, but I know somebody in our project knows them. And so like it's it's like um, there's an emotional connection already, but it really is about um, uh, inspiring them to want to be a part of the journey and, and see this film go from um, nothing and that's why they're to there. You know, yeah, and that was so exciting. It's a community. It, it is. There is a community yeah. that you know become members of whether it's Kickstarter or whatever, right? Yeah. Depending on the theme of that uh, platform, and yeah. they're there because they thrive on this. The idea yeah. of seeing basically being a patron in a way, right? Because they're they're they get to help someone. Mm-hmm. create something realize their dream yes, yeah. and create something yeah. from scratch in a way yeah right and they want to you know it's like when you pay a comp when i <laughs> not everybody's like this but i love to walk up to a stranger and i see i i immediately spot something really cool about them and it could sure. just be a shirt it could be yeah. their, their shoes it could be the way they smile whatever it is and i point it out just yeah. just complete strangers. Wow, what a beautiful da 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 or or yeah. I love the way you laugh or something like that. And you know what? People glow when you do that. Oh, they do. And that I, gives I, it right I witnessed back to you, you doing that at the festival. I witnessed that happen where you walked up to somebody and you complimented their scarf and then it started <laughs> a conversation, you know, um about travel and and where they'd been and so like yeah, yeah. it's 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 uh but yeah, it, it's like it, it creates uh, a connection and an environment. And yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, and again, it gives back to to that person because yes. having that connection with someone through a compliment is way better than some other connection through yeah. some other things. Some yeah. Other way. You so, suck. Yeah, like, right. That's it's not like, a good oh, connection. Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but I mean, that's also not lost on me. Like, I will say, um, the like with with the two campaigns we held, um, and knowing where I started, like with that script, starting it during COVID, and and you know, I would like, uh, I would lock myself away for hours and just write and obsess over this script. Um, and so to go from that to a completed hour, 47 minute film that is, is being like praised, you know, is being like, not, I, that's not the right wording, but like, is, is like, is being celebrated and is being enjoyed, yes. you know, um, it, it feels incredible, but I, I know that like this would not have happened without all of those people who contributed, you know? Yeah. And yeah. you said the key word there because it's one of the, the most important things that we do. And something I emphasize when I'm marketing our film festival is we're celebrating you. Yeah. Uh, a lot of film festivals celebrate the films. I, I tend to, and you know this by now, I tend to celebrate the people behind the films because yeah. I'm inspiring them. I'm hoping to inspire them. Yeah. And I'm to hoping for their you journey. all to inspire each other to continue making films. Yeah. Yes. And that I will say is definitely a difference between various festivals that I've been to um, is it feels like with your festival, it's very much like, well, this is just, you know, this is just 
a step on your journey, you know, mm-hmm. like, like there will be new films. You'll, you'll make another film, you know? Um, and you know, for some people, maybe they will, for some people, maybe they won't. Um, but either but way, they're going to have a blast. Yeah, during exactly. This one time. Yeah. Now for you, when you were, when, right after the screening of your film i just can't i can't the preparation for the screening of your film was was fun um so it's you know people were coming in and sitting down the people from your campaign your funding campaign were coming in yeah they sat together you know yeah. and you were handing them the candy i just thought that was yeah. the cutest thing and <laughs> and then i felt bad though because i didn't bring candy for everybody yeah in the well, like me where's like... my gummy bears you know uh but yeah. no i was just you know that was their that was your their specialty and that was how they yeah. made you made them feel special and that was yeah. awesome and then you know we i introduced you which you know i have to admit levi i i tend not to write scripts because then I get nervous. Sure. And uh, one of the things that I did with that is I I thought I did a pretty good job introducing you with my little uh, comedic little puns, actually. What, what, well, because, remind me okay, what you said. No, I can't it tell you exactly because it wasn't, it was yeah, it wasn't a complete <laughs> yeah. script. But I remember yeah. saying something about the paralysis and the and we'll leave you paralyzed or something like oh, and little yeah, things yeah, like yeah. that that were really corny, uh-huh. but everybody really <laughs> laughed and, and yeah. thought that was really good. And it made it seem like I had the speech planned out, you know, like a like a uh-huh. comedian does, right? When they're doing yeah. their thing. And then you came up there and you introduced and got everybody ready for your film. All of that prepared everybody for the film. All of that psychologically got everybody to feel like, okay. Here we go. We're coming in. You know, it's like that Star Wars Excellent. ride. You know I'm what I mean? I'm glad to hear that. You know, where yeah. they show you things outside while you're waiting in line, you know, and you're getting your juices flowing, you know. And then all of a sudden, lights come off, your film comes on. And I mean, remember the comments don't go there. Don't open yeah. the door. I mean, you were sitting in the back. I was sitting in the back with you. And yeah. I know that you were getting such a big kick out of the reactions to your film. Yeah, it was, it was really exciting. Um, I will say, cause we've, we've been in another festival and we did well at that festival as well, but it was it, like when we were there, um, it was a pretty silent audience. And so the entire time when we were at the other festival, I was like, I don't know if people are enjoying this. It was a big, um, that's something that happens in theaters too. Yeah. And it was, it was in a, it was in a, like a, a big, yeah. yeah, it was. And so so I was feeling a little anxious. And so that's why I was so anxious going into this one. And that's why I was like, I need to sit in the back just <laughs> so I can, like, be away from people if I need to get up and pace, you know, um, because like, you know, it, yeah. like every artist is very sensitive about their art. Um, and so like I, I just needed some distance. Um, but like, like. There were, I mean, within the first five minutes, like even after the, even after the title screen, people were so responsive and then it just got bigger and bigger and it was so fun. (laughs) Like, I remember you walking up and you're like, are you recording these reactions? Because, and I wasn't, but then I pulled my phone out and I started to record the reactions because it was like, it was so fun to hear everybody, um, yeah, I've just, seen it just in the, old the movies uh, where they have the the you know they're in the theater and it's completely packed, and yeah. everybody's watching like some old black and white movie and everybody's like cheering on and yeah. all these things. So it made it feel really like oh we're all we all know each other, we all felt yeah. comfortable with each other, and. It was meant to be that way. You created this film in a way to have those reactions. It wasn't like. Yeah. And it was so exciting to feel that. It was so exciting to feel that. Yeah. Yeah. And then actually, Allison, my lead actress, who has seen this movie multiple times (laughs) at this point, um, but she hasn't seen it since the last film festival, which is, Uh, I think it was December. Um, but, uh, Jamie came up to me at the end and she's like, so Allison got scared in our own movie because she forgot one of the scares. And so when it happened, I guess she was like, (gasps) and Jamie was like, are you serious? (laughs) You were there, you acted that, you know? So, yeah. Well, and she was, and and you become, see, you become really connected to the energy in the room. 
Yeah. Where you're feeling, yeah. you're all feeling it together. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, and it was then really exciting. at the end of the film, whoa, everybody just surrounded you guys. Yeah, it was it was it was um it was very intense, but it was really exciting. Like it was uh it was a good time. Yeah. Um, and they did that, yeah. you know, don't don't get me wrong, guys. They did this for every everybody. Yeah. Everybody, every yeah. film that they showed, everybody yes. was very how should I say supportive reactive to the films and supportive and and would just surround the filmmakers after. Yeah. And I mean, we started the day with the other feature and everybody was sobbing. Yeah, like it was I like know, even me. Like that I think that really set yeah. the tone for the day though, where it was like, you know, we started with that and it was just like we all got in there. You know, we all we all were emotionally there. And so it it was it was a fun way to start the day because it just felt like um it just built throughout the day. Like and and everybody was excited to see what everybody else created yeah christine uh came up to me and said something about that about the bookends you know starting yeah. the festival with one feature and then ending yeah it that with was the very other. smart that was very yeah. smart well i yeah. i don't know i try to be a little bit smart sometimes um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then well, and then breaking favor, up yeah. the uh the shorts because now they're longer but to yeah. breaking them up into about an hour the each two, into two sessions yeah. and having that lunch in between I know that did something because when you all came back for the second session, it was like, yeah. you know, it was uh, the applause. I mean, you're all yeah. connecting with each other. And that was because most of the filmmakers were in the second session. Like, yeah, I don't think I don't think anybody from the any of the filmmakers from the first session were there. There um, was but, I think there was one there. Oh, but, I think you're right. I think it was Jason for Help Wanted, yeah, right? Yeah. 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 Um, but everybody else was in the second session and we had spent the hour of lunch <laughs> bonding with <laughs> each other. Yep. Yeah. 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 So when, when, it, when we finally saw the names come up on the screen, we were all like, yes, like you go, Matt Phillips, yeah. you know, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, it was, it was such a fun experience, you know, yeah. and, and the breaks and giving everybody breaks and things like yeah. that. I just, I, I really enjoyed um, the success that everybody had. And, and like I said, you know, I always feel awkward on the award ceremony. It's like, I just want to leave that part out, you know, but I know that sure. people want that, you know, I mean, yeah. that's the, the, the reason why they submit uh, to a point, I think is because, you know, everybody wants to, uh, wants to hopefully win, you know, sure. but it's, but it's always an awkward thing for me because it's like, I don't want it to feel like, Oh, you're better than this. You're better than no, that. I, I you don't know. think. I know. I it's mean, just I, a thing. Yeah. 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 I don't think you should feel that way. I think that pe all the filmmakers know, like, and, and are going to, like, that, that happens at the end of every festival. And, like, you know, it it really was about the connections, or for, for me anyway, it was about the connections I made there that I was just like, this was so fantastic. I think for most like, everyone it was. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. everyone was very accepting of everything. And, um, I don't think, you know, it's always like, Oh, I wish I would have won, but of course. Right. But at the same yeah. time, I don't really think anybody walked out of there. I mean, if they did, they, they didn't express it. Right. But, yeah. um, walking out of there feeling fulfilled, you know, was that, that was part of my job that I, that I hoped that I did right. Where everybody walks out it, it, like a business, right. You were fulfilled. Mm -hmm. you, you, yeah. you met, you know, I met the criteria that you were expecting or be, maybe beyond, yeah. you know, beyond that. And if you left happy and you, you felt like you came out of there with more than what you came in, yeah. then, then I feel, you know, really good about it. And I think for most people they did because, you know, of what you were talking about earlier with the connections that everybody yeah. made. And then on top of it, here you are, you're like, hey, we're, you know, I'm going to go see, you know, Ricky's wife performance, you know. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, and uh, see that there were many times during the festival when I did get to see you all connecting, laughing with each other, discussing yeah. things together. And that really, really, really made me happy. I love to be around people and surround myself with people who inspire each other. There, that is 
the most fascinating part of life. If if you have yeah. groups of friends that you bring together and they they inspire each other, there's yeah. just no better feeling. And you really were the facilitator of that. Like you like in in like just the the films that you chose and the you know like the environment that you set uh it absolutely made all of us feel safe to chat and to get to know each other and to like venture outside of our own comfort bubble you know um i think we so, had yeah. a really good we always have this really good group of people that connects with each other but i can't know that that's going to happen until it yeah. does yeah you know and um it, Every film festival, we've had people that really, you know, remember last year. Yeah. You know, everybody connected very well during that. I think what happened. And I was only there for one day I last know, year. Right? Um, and, and even in that day, I was like, oh, Caroline and James, they're great. You yeah. know, like and, and Jennifer and like um, Niles. Like there were so many people that I met that I remember that I enjoyed, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But I, I just think this year what made it more was that there was more. There were more yeah. people there. There were more. And I think that's also good coming out of the pandemic where people are feeling more comfortable going to places. But I also think, Levi, the people are more choosy about the places where they do go to expose themselves. Sure. You know, Uh, what do you mean? Well, I I just mean we're in a time. So there's there's so many things happening in the world, you know, there's there's leftovers from the pandemic. You know, there are still people that are afraid to, you know, get yeah. COVID because it's not completely gone. It's not. And there are people, and I respect that with people. You know, remember, uh, there were a couple people there that were wearing masks. Yeah. You know, and yep. so, but they felt completely comfortable. Yeah. And, you know, this is this is a world that we're in. And then there's the whole political and, you know, the way some people are treating each other on social media and things like that. Yeah. That did not play into what is happening at our film festival, you know, no. at our event. And I felt like people coming together and being able to choose places and say, okay, I know that I'm going to feel safe here, that I'm going to be comfortable yeah. here. I'm not sure if I will there, you know, and I think people sure. are becoming more uh, choosy, really. I don't know how else to, to say that, but they're, picking different events in a, in a way with different criteria, you know what I'm sure. saying? Than they sure. were before the pandemic. Yeah. If, yeah. And I mean, also I think the intimacy of, of the festival um, might lend itself to people feeling safer to be vulnerable because it is vulnerable to share those things, you know, um, especially. Art. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I think, I think like it, it, it like, I don't know. It feels it feels intimate. Um, it feels inviting and it feels open um, and it, it doesn't feel like like, I don't know. Yeah. Cold and yeah. Chrissy and caviar. And, you know, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Which I was just kidding. There's yeah, no I know. Way. I know. That's why I brought it up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I, I think it was great. And um, your film was very well accepted. And I think for a lot of the filmmakers, I think they expected your film to win. Uh, You did get it was. Oh, I did not. I did not expect my film to win. I know you didn't. And 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 to be quite honest with you, I couldn't. I couldn't flip a. I would have to flip a coin on it myself because I couldn't tell. You know, I mean, everybody was crying at the end of the other feature. So, like, including me. Yeah, and 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 but. There's so much see the judges because the judges that I select are professionals, right? So they're yeah. not looking at just one thing. Sure. And when you're watching a film because you're watching a film and you're feeling all this emotion, you're going, oh, well, that's a winner. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. When it's more than that, uh, when you're rating it, it's kind of like Mr. Sneed. <laughs> he would grade our our projects and he would say, you know, I'm I'm. I'm grading you on so many different things yeah. that you that come together to make what the industry expects, not yeah. just one thing. And he said, you yeah. might love, you know, so-and-so's project and you may love your own project, but 
that's not how I grade you. And I found that out sure. my own way. In in the end, he always gave me an A, but he would get okay. grade me so low in between everything. And well, it pushed you. Probably. He really did. And he and one time I whined. I was like, "Why do you do this, Mr. Snead?" And he said, "Well, you know, you do." You are working in the industry already, you know, mm. uh, in video production anyway. So you should know these things. So I'm going to grade you harder, okay. you know, and I was like, yeah. OK, but like I, I feel, you know, it's embarrassing <laughs> well, in the class, you know. Yeah. But he did. He was he pushed everybody, all the students. And I think most of the students loved him because of it. You know, that's cool. Yeah. And that's nice. and so for the judges on the films, you know, I can see, you know, clearer now why they chose one over the other, even though it was a close call. You know, uh, there mm-hmm. were a lot of elements to your film. Again, you know, the production value on your film was way up there because of all the elements that you brought together. Well, thank you so much. I genuinely appreciate that. Yes. And I appreciate that they were noticed because of the amount of work and stress that went into that. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, when you watch any film, you're going, well, look at what they had to do. Yeah. You know, look at the location and then look at that location. And they had to, you know, I was thinking about this today. You guys were all over this house. Yeah, we were there. I think there's one room we did not go in and it's this. It was her home office. Yeah. And w- that's where we stored. Um, it was the green, the, the green film equipment, room, right? Basically, uh, the green. Yeah, I mean, it was basically our green room. Yeah, yeah. it was our production room. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, otherwise, every single room in that house, every square inch of that house was used. Yeah, so, and I mean, yeah. within a scene, you're going from yeah. one. I'm. Yeah. It, it's just it's mind boggling because I've been to many film sets where. We're shooting in the kitchen today, so the rest of the house was like yeah. <laughs> a yeah. mess, basically. With oh, and that was like, I mean, we did have that. We had like days where we would shift our mess from one room to the other because like <laughs> yeah. we had those long walkthroughs mm-hmm. where she's walking through the house and um, or running through the house from some demon, you know. And and so like that also like we we used our because i we own a pretty decent sized light kit or i own a pretty decent sized light kit but um that i've acquired over the years but like there were some days that every light was on uh because because we created that moonlight so so it was like we had to put lights outside we had to have lights inside so we could see um so it was just like it was it was like there were days that I'm like, man, if we had like two more light kits, this would be so much easier. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 No, yeah. It, it was it was. So when you start to think about all those things, you know, together, you're going, wow, you really had to maneuver a lot to pull this through. Um, and you did a great job at it. The performances well, were good, too. Um, yeah, thank so you. congratulations to you and the entire team, Levi. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Is there any anything that uh, you'd like to? T- oh, I do want to talk about something. Uh, oh, the audio, because you did have to uh, do some ADR after. Right. Yes. Could you tell? Well, let me put it this way. Oh, the audio <laughs> did not uh-huh. deflect. Like, in other words, you're not paying okay. attention to the audio going, oh, you know, I guess I'd like to know how they did the audio. It yeah. was more like so natural, like any movie you're watching on Netflix. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. I will say that was hours and hours of work um, with the audio. Uh, and it was just like recording the same lines over and over and over and then matching them up and make sure they match. And if like it's even a hair off delete, let's start again. You know, so it was like because because, again, we're very indie. We don't have like a a quick setup where you could just record, you know, move, delete. Like it's, it's a, I have to slide every single one into place to make sure it fits. And if it doesn't, we get rid of it, you know? Um, so it was, it was painstaking, but, uh, and then, you know, you're rebuilding, you're rebuilding the sound of nature for the outside shots. So, um, and, and you have to be in that same emotional space that you were on the day. So it's, it's very hard to do. Um, and I'm grateful that, you, you you know that it appears how you said it did um because because when you don't stop to think about it and as yeah when you're watching a movie and you don't have to stop and think about it and wonder yeah. something or it, you know calling out to you that's yeah. a good thing 
I also appreciate that just because um, I do still hear it. I do still see it as off, but that's because I know what it was on the day. Um, and so like, and I'm a perfectionist. I'm like, like, I mean, I, I, I made the joke while I was there, but there are still things that when I watch this film, I'm like, oh, I could cut that. Oh, I could change this. Um, and at this point, it's been in festivals. I probably shouldn't be, you know, uh, changing it. But, but and I, I haven't. Uh, but um, yeah, I think but, there uh, comes yeah. a point. It's like I would say when I was a graphic artist, right? The only time I was completely done with it was when they said, you know, here's the final yeah. deadline it's like okay yeah. fine yeah. i'm done with it you know yeah. um but you want to you can always always build on it i wouldn't say improve or anything like or fix things i would say you're just it, it's an art thing where you're always building yeah. on from something which is usually what happens when you go to your next project you're yeah. building on to because in the end you've got a legacy now you've yeah. left this legacy this is done no more suffering through the production. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I love that. I, I, there's so much of being in production that I love. Yeah. And I like I'm in therapy and I talk to my therapist about it every week. I feel most alive when I challenge when I'm working on something, you know, like like uh, uh, something creative. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, yeah like, you have to love the challenges. If you're yeah. not if you're if being challenged is not doesn't feel good to you and it scares you then don't be a filmmaker yes my god <laughs> yeah you're in the wrong yeah, yeah this is the yeah. wrong profession if you don't want to yeah be this is the one where and i learned this from my very first film set when when there was a problem everybody whoa, everybody just yeah. comes in filled yeah. with creativity okay and super excited yes. we're gonna fix it. i'm like wait is this like the best part of the movie making part is yeah. like when there's a problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And sometimes it ends up being like happy accidents. Like they, yeah. like in our movie, there was a moment that happens where um, when Allison wakes up in her car in front of the church and then uh, she drives away to go back to her house. Yeah. Uh, there's a moment where just as I start, like because I was behind the camera, as I started panning up to show the the top of the church, um, another car came in and honked at her. Um, <laughs> oh, and it was yes. such a happy accident just because it fit the moment of her rushing to get home. Um, and then almost getting in a car accident. <laughs> like, like, so like we did, I think we did two takes of that. And I was like, no, we're using the one with the horn yeah. because it's just such a happy accident. So yeah. Yeah. There's so many things that, that happen yeah. like that. It's so great. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. So, so I can expect that you guys are coming to the next film festival. Even if you don't have a film, you're coming, right? Well, I, I, I would love to, but I also, one of my crew, Hector, who I talked a little bit about. He hated was, it. <laughs> no, he was so inspired that he keeps, like, he's he's been messaging me, um, and he is working on some scripts, and he oh, might want to uh, shoot something. Yeah, and so I was like, heck, if you go, I will be there. So, uh, yeah. That's pretty awesome. That, see... That makes me so happy. Yeah. That makes me so happy. You know, it's just like this this podcast itself uh, for our listeners. You know, you know some of them, uh, Levi. There are people that we know. They're part of our community. Yeah. And, you know, the job of this, this podcast is to inspire people and to... Um, because knowing how this works and knowing you know, how people can make movies with the phone that they have in their own yeah. hand, literally right now is, um, is special. It, it just, mm -hmm. this is a part of the industry that is completely as much as, you know, you watch these movies and you're going, yeah, you know, um, I, that's a great film, like any other film that I watch, you know, but the thing is that, this is what's different is the fact that the person who's watching a film just because they're watching a movie has a, a camera that is yeah. their phone. And the capabilities of making their yes. own movie. Yeah. And like I tell them, I tell people a lot in my workshops and I've done that for years is say, until you get behind this and you start making it, you don't realize what you know. 
already yeah. that's ingrained in your DNA from growing up watching movies. Yeah. You know? And And it's fun to discover yeah. through through the process and discover your own voice as a creator. Yes. Yeah. It's like when you're you know, uh coloring or not so much coloring, but when you're drawing and coloring your own work. Yeah. Right? As opposed to coloring books. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah. and you're putting colors together and drawing things and you're building again, building on top of things and extending things and you're going, Whoa, look at what I'm creating. And it's, yeah. it's the child, the little kid in you that, that yeah. comes out through that creativity. And we always have it. We'll have it till the day we die, no matter how old yeah. we are. I think people who are artists are, it's not like, oh, you're so special because you're an artist. I just think that they inspire the artist inside all of us. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. Yeah. I, and and inspire the child in, in all of yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah, because that's yeah. important. Yeah. It's important. There's, there's yep. you know, there's life, you know, got to make a living and all these things. But, hey, if you can be passionate about the work that you do, then you're not really working. Yeah. You know, and if and Levi, the the one thing that I wish for you is that this is all that you could do because not only would it inspire others, you know, but you inspire yourself on top of that, but because you're bringing things into the world that will be there forever, even, you know, I mean literally forever, just like all yeah. the other filmmakers and movie makers out there who aren't with us anymore. Yeah. You know, I, I have a close friend who actually said the same thing to me recently. And, and I, I, I think it sort of opened my eyes to the fact that I now have like a, a feature. I mean, this is my second feature, but this is like, I'm so proud of this one. So I have a feature that like will live on longer than me. Um, and so it's sort of, it's, it's a really, it feels good to feel like I'm leaving, you know, a part of me behind, I guess, you know, cause I, I don't have children. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. But this is yeah. better than children, Levi. What can I oh say? Oh my gosh. This is so much better than kids. It doesn't cry. It doesn't force me to feed and, it. Like, and for yeah. the record, I love children. I love puppies. I love kitties. I love children. Yeah. I love all animals, you know, I do too, except I for snakes. I don't care for oh. snakes. I know. I'm just, just, you can leave the snakes out. I'm not saying I don't, you know, that I would kill them or anything. I just don't sure. want to touch them. Yeah. Um, yeah, I yeah. don't want them around me. Have you seen snakes on a plane? I don't think so. I, ah. you know, no, thank you. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so on the, yeah. on the note of snakes. <laughs> yeah. That's the way to go. Yeah. Out. <laughs> I think we should, we should kind of wrap this up. What would be sure. one thing out of all the things that you experienced in making your film? Um, that you would say to people, this is one thing that you don't want to miss out on. Don't forget this. Uh, like a piece of advice yeah. for, uh, be flexible, uh, be open and acknowledge that sometimes what you have planned may not be the best way to make it happen. And so be willing to ebb and flow and figure and troubleshoot, you know, and figure out, uh, like, like you were saying, like, it's, it's fun when those moments happen and everybody suddenly is like, how can we solve this problem? Um, so be open to that. Yeah. All right. Say goodbye to our listeners. Well, thank you so much for having me, Susie and goodbye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>